Welcome back to another episode of the Junk Man's Adventures. On this episode, we're going to take a look at getting an old bike running. Well, if you've been watching the show for a while, you recognize this bike. This is my $25 bike that I picked up at a garage sale. I thought it'd be the perfect bike to show you guys how to get a bike running that isn't currently running before you spend a lot of money in either modifications, restoration, or anything else. I wanted to give you some tips and tricks on the bare bit minimum of things you need to do to get a bike running that isn't currently running. So let's get started. Well here we are on the other side of the bike. The reason we're over here is because this is a rotary valve engine. So the carburetor is behind a cover that I have right here behind the cover because uh, the rotary valve spins on and closes the intake port and fuel goes into the crankcase. But this, everything we're going to show here will be common to any bike two or four stroke that is not currently running or is running poorly. This is something you should do first time out before you even try to ride the bike. What you're going to see going forward here is we're going to tackle a fuel system, uh, meaning cleaning the tank, uh, cleaning the fuel shutoff, replacing fuel lines, cleaning and adjusting, doing some preliminary adjustments to the carburetor, uh, changing some fluids, we're going to check for spark, and if there's problems there, we'll have to diagnose that. Uh, another thing you need to have on hand, spark plug, brand new spark plug. Um, I don't care if that one looks brand, brand new, you don't know how old it is, you don't know if it's working properly. They're cheap, buy a spark plug. Other thing you need to have before you get into this project is buy some fuel, fuel line. I keep fuel line on hand because I got a lot of bikes and fuel lines degrade over time. I don't care if it's a fairly late model bike, but it's been sitting for a while. If it's been sitting outside, UV uh, light degrades fuel lines. So have that on hand before you start. And probably the most important thing is your service manual. Pick up a service manual for whatever the bike is that you're trying to work on because all the spec specifications for the spark plug type from the carburetor settings uh, are going to be in the service manual and I have it for this bike. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start cleaning up the bike and getting into the bare minimum to get this bike running. It shouldn't take too much. Okay, we got the carburetor off, got the spark plug out, and I have my brand new spark plug hooked up to the lead, and I have the kill switch unhooked, so let's check for spark. Oh, and we got great spark there. So, uh, we know the ignition's working. Now, if we didn't have spark, that'd be something we'd have to diagnose further. Now, on to the carburetor. 
Okay, we got our carburetor off the bike. It's still connected to the throttle uh, because the throttle cables go into the carburetor. We got to take those off. Also, you may have noticed uh, the throttle cable, this uh, adjuster is, uh, is broken. So we're going to have to get a new throttle cable or make one or something. So more on that later. But this will work fine just for us to uh, uh, get it running. So the first thing we got to do is start disassembling our carburetor and see how gunky this thing is. Okay, I got all the screws out of the bowl. I'm ready to take it off. Sometimes you gotta use something uh, kind of rubber. Give it a little tap, especially if it's been uh, sitting for a while. There we go. Kind of pop, popped off there. The uh, gasket will kind of be uh, stuck there. And if you're real careful, you can uh, reuse the gasket. And this one looks pretty good. Um, yeah, there's. I don't know if you can see in there, there's a little bit of a little bit of trash down at the bottom there. So it's a good thing we didn't just try to you know, put gas in this and start it because it wouldn't have worked. Okay, and if you notice this has brass floats, which is pretty common. I'm gonna use the point of my screwdriver there to just grab the little uh, pin that holds the float. Of course you've seen me take apart carburetors before. You know, I have a whole uh, disassembly video and diagnosis. Um, there's our little floats. Um, you know, depending on how old the bike is, these can be broken, bent, or leaking. And you know, I might be able to hear a little bit of stuff in, in there, so these might have a small leak in them. Well, maybe not. It, sometimes, you can, sometimes you can hear them if you shake them by your ear. But uh, we'll uh, clean those up and, and kind of diagnose those later. Um, yeah, see there was some old gas in there. So they kind of had this running before. Um, get to take a rag here and let's, uh, okay. And then you want to hold a rag because taking that float out, here's your little needle. And uh, it looks, uh, looks in pretty good shape. Uh, it's a little wear mark on there, but looks pretty good. Might try to source a new one before we put this back back together a new needle and seat. They're probably, uh, it's probably uh, available, but the little spring is working there, so we'll set that set that aside. Okay, and as you can see here, you know, it's, it's like any other carburetor that I've taken apart. Uh, down in this hole here, way down in there, that's your pilot jet, this is your main jet. Of course, this is where the fuel comes in, where that uh, needle valve sits and the float rides on there to open and close it. And that's sometimes if you have a carburetor that's flooding, could mean this the needle and seat are so worn that uh, they don't seal uh, and there's also a little uh, fiber gasket underneath here that can leak and that'll let fuel through and that that's sometimes how you can diagnose uh, diagnose those problems so I'm gonna take uh, my uh, main jet and pilot jet out next okay get a closer shot here I take our main jet out I like to use a screwdriver with a really wide blade that uh, so it can span the whole uh, jet opening because uh, these are brass. They're easy to uh, strip. And there it is. There's a little brass washer underneath there. Let's, uh, let's take that out so we don't lose it. We want to make sure we put that back in because that spaces the jet out. Um, and then down there, that's where the uh, that's where the jet needle rides. And uh, this is what it does. It rides in here and it and opens and closes the uh, main jet. Oh initially when you open and close the throttle. So looking through there, I, I can see light through there, but we'll still uh, soak those parts in some cleaner to make sure. And uh, now we gotta get down into that pilot jet. And uh, I have this small bladed screwdriver. Um, I've even taken it to the grinder to just make it thinner. Um, so you're gonna have to find one. 
You want to kind of look down in there, find the tooth of it, and you don't want to force this because you don't want to strip those out. Usually these come out real nice, but if they don't, don't force it. Uh, soak the carburetor in some cleaner to maybe loose some corrosion or some varnish if this has been sitting in there before you do this. You don't want to strip that out because uh, there's not a, uh, an easy way to get these out uh, without using what's called an e easy out or a bold extractor and even then uh, it's possible that you won't get it out and then don't lose it because you got to shake it and you know what as I shifted it over I got some I got a little piece of crud out, I got a little piece of crud out of there so uh, that tells me that this pilot jet's probably blocked and uh, yeah I can barely see actually I can't see any light in there so if we would have just tried to put gas in this this thing wouldn't have run or if it would have run it wouldn't have idled because that pilot jet is uh, not clear but I can see down into the carburetor um, I think let's see if I can get it right there yeah see um, see that's the pilot uh, port there if I move my finger in and out of there you can see it same with the main jet so you want to make sure those passages are clear we'll blow those out with some uh, carburetor aerosol carburetor cleaner uh, you also want to make sure these little holes they may be a dip tube or something in here but you make sure those are uh, clear because those are that's your uh, vent to the outside uh, you know you saw me take this part at the beginning that's your uh, this is your uh, most people will call it the choke but it's not really a choke it's an enrichment what it does is it it opens and closes and allows fuel to come up through this pipe here and uh, enrich the mixture through a uh, through a hole and you probably can't see it down in down in the throat here so it's actually an enrichment valve but most people commonly call it a choke which it works the same way um, and this and in this case this has an air screw because it's on the uh, the uh, front of the carburetor where the air comes through a fuel screw would be somewhere over here or under here and would control how much fuel goes into the idle mixture so we want to take that out because we want, there's some pa small passages in there that we want to take care of like I said this carburetor is not too bad but I see some gunk on there so we're going to want to clean those up well let's put those away and same with in, uh, in here we got little passages and such that go in there and there's a little uh, they, sometimes they call it an air jet it's non removable but there's a little jet in there and that's that's what this is controlling is how much air can go through here to mix with the pilot the, the fuel that's coming through the pilot circuit that comes through this little hole and then into the engine so that's kinda how that all works and uh, that's why you wanna before you even start uh, to trying to start a motorcycle especially if you've been sitting from Really, even, a, even if it's been sitting for a year, sometimes gas can uh, uh, varnish up and cake up all these little parts and passages in here. Um, before you want to try to start it, this is what you need to do is tear it down. Same with uh, cleaning out the carburetor bowl. Be careful of your gasket because you could reuse that if it's kind of hard to find. This one uh, we can find. I'll probably try to reuse it just for now, but when we get to, when I get to really going on this bike, I'll probably replace all that. So, all we got to do now is take our parts and our carburetor body and we need to clean it all up. Now, I will not soak this carburetor body because, see this? This is kind of like uh, plastic or actually it's Bakelite, which uh, some of the young kids might not know much about that. That's an early form of plastic. Uh, you don't want to soak this. This can disintegrate in some carburetor cleaners, so you got to be very careful. So we're going to have to hand clean this. But all these other parts we can put in my in a tray of uh, carb dip and let them soak for a while uh, to get all the gunk and corrosion off them. And then we'll put this back together, take our service manual out, and set it up to factory specs. Well, we've got everything cleaned up. Got the carb uh, all cleaned up, all the little parts cleaned up, and uh, it's all as good as new. And we've checked all the settings put everything back to the factory uh, settings per the service manual here. Now you'll notice here uh, the floats actually turn red. Well actually that's my little uh, secret here. I dipped them in uh, this stuff's called, called Red Coat uh, fuel tank liner. Uh, there's all other fuel tank liners out there but I like this stuff. It's one part. Just uh, shake it up. Dip them in there because uh, if you remember I suspected maybe there was a little fuel rattling around in there 
And so there might have been a pinhole somewhere on these floats, probably where the solder joints, where the uh, float actually attaches to uh, where the tang is. And uh, that's pretty common actually, especially old black brass floats like this. So that's just a precaution. Uh, set everything up, uh, checked our float height, and actually it was uh, spot on, so nobody's messed with this. The only thing that's changed is somebody did change to a slightly leaner main jack. I'm gonna show you that on the board here. Here's what I like to do here. I like to write down what I'm working on and, and any notes that I take while I'm working on, I put on my little uh, marker board here. Anyway, just go over uh, here's the carb specs uh, for this bike. Main jet is supposed to be a 75. Like I said, somebody put in a 72 and a half. Now, the 75 is you know roughly at uh, 2,000 feet above sea level. I'm at about six, so 72 and a half is probably just right. It's probably why somebody put it in there. So we'll go, we'll run with it to try to get it started here. If it doesn't seem to run very good, I'm going to go back to the 75 and then tweak from there. Pilot jet, 17 and a half. That's stock. Float height, 24 millimeter. It was right on, even though we checked it. The uh, air screw, our baseline is one and a half turns. That's probably gonna be where it is. And then we can tweak it uh, quarter turn, half turn, if we need to. Also, uh, the spark plug is a B7HS. There was actually a champion plug in there and I crossed it and it didn't cross to this plug. So it was actually then, the thread depth was correct, but the heat range was probably wrong. So uh, we got the right plug in there according to our uh, service manual. Now it's on to the tank. Well, our next step in uh, getting this bike running, or before we attempt to start it, is uh, cleaning up the tank. And uh, you know, actually, it's uh, not too bad in here. It's not really too rusty. Just needs washed out. Which uh, first thing I'm going to do is uh, just a little soap and water, wash it out here, let, uh, blow it out dry, let it dry completely, uh, and then the next thing we're going to do. Because it's not too rusty, I don't need to do any rust removal techniques like using oxalic acid or uh, evapor rust or um, apple cider vinegar. I've even heard uh, works pretty good. I've never tried it personally, but I might um, on another project where I need to do that. So that's what I'm going to do there. After all that's done, then uh, I mentioned this before. I'm going to use my red coat fuel tank liner. Follow the instructions. Coat the ins in hole inside of the tank. And why do this uh, when I'm just going to try to get it going? Why not just wash it out, throw some gas in there, rinse it around, blow it out? Well, it's because it's like, well, once I put gas in here, then I have to clean it out again, otherwise this stuff isn't going to stick. So why not just do it once, put this in, let it dry, and then it's ready to go. And then when we get around to it, uh, fixing the tank of some of these dents and then painting it, you know, the tank's already lined. We don't have to worry about messing up our, our uh, new paint job with uh, this stuff. Um, also is the fuel shutoff valve, which like I told you at the beginning of this video, this, isn't the, this doesn't look like the correct one because it has another fuel tap and they put a uh, hose with a bolt to block off one other side. I'll just use it for now until I can get uh, the proper one. But uh, that's another thing. This is the most often overlooked part of a, of a bike when uh, somebody's trying to get it running and they got everything else they think done and they forgot to clean this out and there's actually no, no fuel or not enough fuel flowing through the shutoff to actually allow it to run. So that's what I'm going to do now is clean up all these parts and get this tank line. So we're getting closer to trying to start this bike. Just got to wait for it to dry overnight, then I can put the fuel shut off in, we can put our carburetor back on, run some fuel lines, and we'll be ready to start this thing. Until next time, I'm going to fill the transmission up with oil and do some other preliminary checks, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. So until then, 
Like my Facebook page, check out my website, and thanks for watching.